I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 245, Digestive Pain. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. Get ready to learn how to live in your dream body, free from all the diet rules. You're going to learn the naturally thin mindset and strategies so that you never need to count, track, or measure your food ever again. And instead, you get to live the rest of your life at your body's optimal weight with the peace and freedom you've been craving. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to this week's podcast episode where we're going to talk about some digestive pain, what it is, when it can happen, how to notice it, and what to do about it. So a lot of times on the podcast, I talk about the discomfort from overeating. That is eating when you're not hungry, eating food that's never going to feel good in your body, regardless of the quantity, and or simply eating past your optimal satisfaction point, overeating in regards to quantity, the amount of food. And so that can, of course, lead to digestive pain and or digestive discomfort. But today I want to talk about digestive pain and or digestive discomfort that you experience when you aren't overeating, when you are eating at your optimal hunger level, when you are eating food that usually feels good in your body, and when you don't overeat in quantity, yet you still feel some digestive discomfort which may leave you wondering why, like, why is this happening to me when I can usually eat this food and feel totally fine? And I know I ate when I was hungry. So why is my body not responding in the way I anticipated? And yes, of course, your body changes over time. So there may be foods that used to feel good that don't feel good now. But I want to give you a new angle to look at any of this digestive pain or discomfort from so that you can understand if maybe there is an underlying cause that is different than you had previously considered. And I also want to share that the digestive pain and discomfort that we feel as we change our relationship with our food and our bodies changes over time. So when I used to binge and overeat significantly and eat, you know, 10 different types of snacks in a huge quantity and just feel so much digestive discomfort, the digestive pain and discomfort that I now experience pales in comparison to that type of digestive discomfort. But what is interesting is because I now feel so incredible in my body, and that's my new baseline, that when I do feel some digestive pain or digestive discomfort, the starkness in the difference is what I notice. So even though the digestive pain I feel now pales in comparison to the binging digestive pain I used to experience, now because I feel so light and lean and vibrant more often than not, when I do feel some digestive discomfort, it really sticks out to me as something is happening in my body because my new baseline is so elevated from what it used to be. So I want to start by sharing what digestive pain and discomfort feels like for me. And of course, you want to think about what does it feel like for you, especially what does it feel like when you don't think you've overeaten? So for me, this type of digestive pain and discomfort feels like a knotting in my stomach. It feels like there's a compacted food ball that's just stuck. It feels very tight and stuck. And it's not as much as a bloated, puffy feeling for me. That usually comes from genuine overeating, meaning eating when I'm not hungry, eating food that's never going to feel good to my body, and or overeating in quantity. That for me usually leads to this bloated, puffy feeling versus not feeling like I've overeaten in any sort of way, but noticing like a nodding, tight, <laughs> compacted food ball stuck in my digestive tract. So there is a lot of information out there in regards to your emotional state when you start to eat. And what I think is very interesting that maybe we knew intuitively as humans, or maybe we did know at some point along the way, but I find it very interesting that many cultural traditions and cultural practices and a lot of religious traditions start by saying a prayer before we eat or start by saying some form of gratitude before we eat. And what that does is it calms your body down and it gets your body in a state of gratitude and presence before you eat. And how our bodies physiologically digest food is much more efficient and much better for us when our bodies are in a calmer, more peaceful, grateful state than when we are very distracted and anxious and stressed out. And you can go and find the research and understand physiologically what happens and the differences and how our body digests food and why it's better and all of that. But 
I know a lot of you are research fanatics and you love finding information, so you can go do that. But what is important about that information is that you use it to make a change to help you get closer to the result that you want. I am someone who, for much of my weight loss journey, researched so much and learned so much information, yet I never really put it to use in a way that led to a long-lasting result. So you can, of course, go go to the Googles, go and understand all of that at a physiological level. But what is most important isn't necessarily that you understand exactly why that happens, exactly why is it harder for our body to digest food when we're stressed out, but to notice if it's impacting you and if it is causing you any sense of digestive pain and or discomfort. So lately, I have noticed for myself that When I eat something and I have this kind of stuck compacted food ball in my stomach and I haven't overeaten, it's usually because of the emotional state I was in prior to beginning to eat. So I have four kids. I have a three-month-old when I am recording this podcast. I run a business. I homeschool them. And sometimes I find myself quite hungry and I just like need to eat something to tide me over until I can take a few minutes to warm up some food to eat. So if it's maybe, you know, 1130 in our house and the older kids are just finishing their lunch and I am getting ready to put the baby down and to put the toddler down and I'm feeling quite hungry, but I feel like the baby's just kind of screaming at me and she really wants to go, you know, go down and and take a nap that I'm not going to take 15 minutes in that exact moment to warm up some curry and rice that I have in her refrigerator. I want to just put her down first and help her go to sleep, help the toddler go to sleep. And I also know for me that I feel a lot better when I eat in a calmer state. So in that moment, a couple of times lately, I have had some nuts to eat. And I know, you know, in 45 minutes or whatever it is, I will, you know, have a have a meal. And so I am not overeating in the sense that I am eating when I'm hungry, so my body is primed and ready for food. I am eating food that I eat regularly and feel good when I eat, which are a particular type of nuts. And I'm not overeating in quantity. I'm not eating, you know, half the the carton and feeling really uncomfortable because I've overeaten. I'm eating just like a handful of them. I put them in this kind of small bowl, have a couple. And I noticed that I was eating this food that usually feels good, but I just have this kind of like pit in my stomach afterwards. And I know this, and I've known this before, about our emotional state that we're in when we eat and how that can cause a lot of digestive discomfort if we're in especially a very high vibration, a high elevated emotion, something like stress or anxiety or overwhelm, that our digestive system just really isn't in its optimal state to digest the food. And therefore, as a result, it gives us the feedback by giving us some digestive pain and or digestive discomfort. So if you've ever experienced this, you just want to be on the lookout for it because it's different than, oh, I overate because I was dreading going back to work. And even though I wasn't hungry, I decided to go eat some peanut M&Ms, which always used to be my thing that I would distract myself with when I was working. I would always go and you know get some peanut M&Ms, get some pretzels, get something to eat when I wasn't actually hungry. So this is very different in that you are hungry, you're eating food that serves you, you're not overeating in quantity yet you feel some of that digestive discomfort. So you want to just notice it for yourself. And how you notice it is you might ask yourself before you eat, how am I feeling right now? What emotional state am I in? You might ask yourself, am I actually hungry? And then you want to notice how you're feeling when you are eating. Are you rushing? Are you standing up? Are you present? Are you distracted? And then you simply want to ask yourself, how am I feeling when you're done eating? And often how we notice things in the beginning is after the fact. So I started to notice for me in this example I'm giving you that when I was eating, standing up, kind of rushing, even though I was hungry, just to kind of tide me over till I would sit down and have some food, I was noticing after the fact that I was feeling some digestive pain, some digestive discomfort, just feeling that really tight, stuck, constricted feeling in my stomach. And so I started noticing an after the fact, and then I always start by asking myself, did I overeat? Did I eat when I wasn't hungry? Did I eat food that doesn't feel good for me? And or did I overeat in quantity? And all three of those questions were no. So you want to start there first. 
And then I started asking myself, okay, what is the pattern I'm noticing? And I noticed I was always in kind of a rushed state. I was always feeling like I had to get this done or I had to get that done or I just needed to do something else or feeling a little bit overwhelmed or feeling a little stressed or, you know, kind of eating and staring out the window, thinking about the 50 things I wanted to get done. I was not in any sort of calm, peaceful state at all. So you want to notice for you, if you ever have this experience and when you ever have this experience, how are you feeling before you're eating? How are you feeling while you're eating? And use any moment of digestive discomfort that you have to cue you in as to that something for you to look at, that something for you to understand so that you can feel even better in your body. What can easily happen is when you start to feel better and you start to lose weight, that you have these moments of digestive discomfort like I'm describing and you gloss over them because you think, well, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't really matter. I'm you know, feeling a lot better than I was and you're comparing how you're feeling now to how you used to feel and it's significantly improved. But what I want to share with you and for you to take away is that when you use even these seemingly inconsequential moments to get to know your body even better, you get to feel even better. And you get to go on this trajectory that allows you to feel even better than you may even imagine possible for you. So you want to tune in to any moment of digestive pain or discomfort as a way to use it as a lesson in getting to know your body so that you can feel even better and better and better and better. So what you can do is notice for you, how does it feel in your body if and when you experience digestive pain or discomfort that doesn't come from overeating? Is it similar to the way I described? Is it like a tight, stuck, constricted food ball in your digestive tract rather than feeling a sense of puffiness or bloat? Or is it something different? Maybe it feels very different for you. And you want to notice what that feels like so that then you can find any sense of pattern that creates that. So you notice then, how are you feeling emotionally, both when you start eating and how do you feel emotionally while you're eating? And then how do you feel emotionally afterwards? And you can do this both when you're feeling great. So when you eat a meal and you ate at your optimal hunger level, you ate food that served you and you stopped at your satisfaction point that is perfect for you and you feel really lean and energized and nourished and you feel really good, you can use that to ask yourself, okay, what did I do to allow me to feel that great? And then you want to notice when you have something that contrasts with that, when you don't feel as great so that you know what to keep doing and you know what to change. So like I said, a lot of times this happens for me and for other women that I have helped when they are in a high stress, high overwhelm, high anxious, high nervous state. It's those emotions that are very buzzy and they kind of vibrate with a very high frequency and they can lead to us also eating in a way that feels very out of our control. And so I think it's unrealistic that we are going to just stop feeling stressed instantaneously. And what is great news is that we don't need to get to a perfectly calm state. Instead, think of it as more wanting to add calm into the mix of your emotions. So when we temper an emotion, that simply means we balance it or counterbalance it or neutralize it. It doesn't mean you need to eradicate it. So if I'm feeling overwhelmed in a moment, but I'm quite hungry and I want to eat something, my intention is not to completely eradicate the feeling of overwhelm. It's simply just to counterbalance it a little bit, counterbalance it and or neutralize it enough so that I can calm my body down even just a little bit to become more present and to be able to listen to my body and to be able to allow my body the space to digest food. You can even think about when you are in some of those higher buzzy vibrational states, like if I'm feeling very anxious about something or even take it to an extreme of panic. If you're panicking about something, if you are feeling severely anxious about something, my brain is just going a million miles a minute. It's just like thinking, 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 thinking. It's trying to problem solve and it's thinking about this and then it's bouncing around to this and then it's worrying about something completely irrelevant to whatever I'm anxious about. 
And what you can think about in that moment is where's all of your energy going to? For me in those high vibrational states, it's going to almost to frantic problem solving very much in my head, trying to use my intellect to solve a problem and usually not to the most efficient degree possible, but that's what the energy in my body is going towards. So the energy in my body in that moment is not going towards digestion. So then if I'm in that state and I add food into my body, when you put food into your body, your body has to digest the food. And so it's not just going to sit there and do nothing. Your body will start to digest the food. But I think about it as then the efficient use of my body's energy is very much torn between digestion and frantic problem solving. And it just leads to a sense of chaos in my body. And so, like I said, you don't need to completely eradicate that high vibrational emotional state, but you just want to calm it down a little bit so that the balance between digestion and what's going on in your mind can be more equal so that the digestive process has enough energy and enough attention to be able to do what it needs to do without leading to digestive pain. So once you do notice that you're in this state and maybe you have noticed a pattern of, like I shared before, for me, it's standing up, I am hungry, eating something that usually feels good, but just being very much in a high vibrational state. Maybe when you do notice that, then what you want to do is in that moment, you want to pause, you want to breathe, you want to notice how you feel emotionally. And even for me now, simply recognizing it. Oh, okay, I'm feeling stressed in this moment. I am going to take a minute to temper that stress, to counterbalance that stress with a little bit of gratitude or calm. And a lot of times simply recognizing it is enough. So I have a deal with myself that I'm still, of course, totally going to eat because I'm hungry in that moment. I'm just going to give it a minute. And a lot of times recognizing that stress or that overwhelm will allow you to temper it because it's like, sometimes I think about it as a child who just needs a little bit of attention. You just need to look at them, give them a look, maybe give them a hug. And sometimes that's all they need. Sometimes that's all our stress needs is in that moment, it just wants to be acknowledged. And so when you do that, then you can temper it momentarily. And then I usually decide, okay, I'm not going to eat standing up. I'm just going to take exactly what I was going to eat anyways. And I'm just going to breathe and sit down and give myself, you know, 30 extra seconds to eat. This doesn't need to be some very elaborate sort of ritual that you do for yourself in order to calm your body down. Now, of course it can, but even for me, just adding just a little bit of that calm, a little bit of that peacefulness, a little bit of that acknowledgement of that stress is enough. And then I have noticed that I don't experience that digestive pain. I don't experience that digestive discomfort. And I have other podcast episodes. You can go back to many other podcast episodes and we will link the episode on how to feel is what the episode is titled. That goes through how to allow emotions in a more detailed and kind of elaborate process that you can do. But when you are experiencing stress or overwhelm and you know you're not going to feel as great as you could otherwise if you eat, but you are hungry, a lot of times what you need is just something really quick in that moment. And that's all you need is to just pause, breathe. How am I feeling? Okay, I'm feeling stressed. I got it. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to take a minute. Maybe you do say a prayer. Maybe you do say something before you eat. Maybe you do have something that you can say out of gratitude to help you just kind of exhale help you acknowledge what you're feeling, and then eat what you're going to eat. The other reason this is helpful is because how you start eating is usually how you keep eating. And sometimes it can feel like a roller coaster because you might start a little stressed and you're genuinely hungry, but then you might notice that it grows and it grows. And then someone is talking to you and it's like, you just want them to be quiet because you're trying to enjoy yourself eating and you get more annoyed. And so you're like standing there eating and you thought you were just going to eat a handful of nuts, but then a couple people are talking to you and you're distracted and you don't know how much you've eaten. And then you start to eat some more and then you start to eat faster and bigger bites. And then you're paying less attention. And then it's as if that buzzing, quick, rushing feeling inside of you kind of takes hold. And now it's really hard to stop eating. And so how you start eating is often how you keep eating. And it will be how you 
end eating. And so if you start eating from a buzzy, high vibrational emotional state, a lot of times it can lead to a sense of a roller coaster that is kind of hard to stop. And so even just giving yourself this moment that I shared with you here in just pause and breathe and how do I feel and recognizing it and giving it some attention, what that can do is it can make it so much easier also to stop eating if that is something that you find challenging. Because when you start eating from a calmer and present state, right, not like necessarily blissfully calm and present, but just a little bit calmer than you may have started otherwise. When you start eating in that state, it makes it so much easier to then stop eating when you have reached your optimal satisfaction point. And because you have given that emotion that you are in, let's say it's stress in that moment, you've given it that sense of acknowledgement. You've given it that sense of awareness. It's kind of put a pause button on that emotion from taking over and leading to a sense of out of control when you are eating, then it's also easier to remind yourself, oh yeah, I want to stop eating when I still feel good. I want to stop eating when I feel lean and energized and I want to spend the afternoon or evening feeling good. Like I was sharing before, a lot of those feelings like anxiety and stress and overwhelm, we're so in our head and we're in a very rushed kind of frantic state trying to problem solve or buzzing from topic to topic in our own mind. And what we fail to do when we're in that state is we fail to think about how we even want to feel when we're done eating. So even if you had thought about it in the morning when you were feeling calm and you maybe set your intention for the day or you used the tool that we talk about here, a lot of the buckets, and you said to yourself, okay, I want to feel lean and energized and nourished when I'm done eating today. When you start eating and you're feeling really stressed, your brain forgets about that, <laughs> forgets about the intention in regards to how you want to feel when you are done eating because it seems irrelevant to the frantic problem solving that you are currently going through. And so tempering those emotions with just an ounce of calm, just an ounce of peacefulness, just a little bit of gratitude allows you to remember, oh yeah, that's right. I want to feel really lean and energized because I want to spend the afternoon feeling really great. So there are so many reasons to use any sense of digestive pain and or digestive discomfort to get to know your body better, get to know your eating habits better, to get to know yourself better so that you can use those moments as lessons to help you feel even better, to feel even more energized, even more lean, even more light, even more nourished, even more vibrant in your body than you potentially ever thought possible. So just make sure you don't overlook them. Never beat yourself up for having experienced digestive pain, digestive discomfort. I don't think we ever reach a state in our bodies where we are free from any digestive discomfort, where we just never experience it ever again. I think the ways in which we experience it are very kind of minimal in comparison to what you may have experienced from significant overeating but they still are moments that will help you feel even more incredible than you probably ever thought possible. All right, my friends, use this episode to feel better and better, to get to know your body so that you can feel as energetic, light and lean and vibrant as possible for you. If you've enjoyed this podcast episode, please take a minute to write and leave a review. Every time you write and leave a review, I always read them. I love hearing from you. And all of the reviews help the podcast platforms know to suggest this podcast to other people who will also be able then to experience the freedom and the peace of losing weight in a way that doesn't require so many strict diet rules that so many of us have been led to believe are the only way to lose weight. And so that is what I hope for each and every one of you and for all of the future women who find and listen to this podcast is that you really can see for yourself that your body wants you to live at your optimal weight. And you can do that and you can live there with a sense of freedom and a sense of peace while feeling incredible in your body and experience a relationship with food and your body that you may have only ever dreamed of in the past, but now get to experience in the reality of your life. So my friends, I hope you all have a great week and I will talk with you all next time. 
Hey friend, if you're enjoying the podcast, I invite you to come and check out the Naturally Thin for Life membership at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join, where you'll learn the full Naturally Thin method broken down into simple and doable steps so that you lose the weight you want peacefully and rapidly and keep it off with ease for the rest of your life. The Naturally Thin for Life membership provides you with the tools to not only lose the weight you want, but customize your mindset and your habits to your unique body and life. As part of the membership, you also get an implementation workbook to ensure your inevitable success. Head over to naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join to get an inside look and tour of the Naturally Thin for Life membership. Hear from countless women who've utilized the tools and the extraordinary successes they've been able to achieve. I hope you join us over there at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join.